second reading from the latest holiday novel, China Jewel. Media around the world cover an inspiring and beautiful ocean race as international tall ships once again sail the ancient tea route to China. Yet beneath the bright sails hide evil and treachery as the competitors sabotage and even murder each other to win the billion dollar prize. The American entry is the Peregrine, a replica of a famous 19th century clipper with a mysterious past. Tough former soldier Jim Cutter is the ship's race director. It's his responsibility to ensure the ship makes it to its destination in one piece. Then, far at sea, the Peregrine disappears. Against impossible odds, Cutter must track down the ship and rescue its crew. Most importantly, he must still conquer his recurring personal demon. His only son is aboard. Cutter failed him once before, and he will go through hell and high water to bring him safely home again. Can do, said Cutter right away. I got a lot to learn about the boat. I've been studying the plans Bill sent me. Jolly smiled and replied. First off, she likes to be called a brig. She's temperamental and deserves respect like any lady. You'll get used to her, don't worry. It helped Cutter was as tough as the workers in the yard. When he arrived, the white craftsmen were complaining the minority workmen got more pay for less work. He negotiated an agreement. However, a few weeks later, a couple of the carpenters insisted their white counterparts still received too much money. A firm glance from Cutter kept him on the job. He was in his early fifties, tall with a round face, twinkling blue eyes, and curly hair that he got from his Irish mother. He saw humor in life and laughed often and heartily. Yet, he could look at a worker with a persuasive stare that would sell a used car to a used car salesman. Afterward, that same man would come out swearing to trust Cutter to have his back. If Cutter had a weakness, it was an unbending willingness to choose his job over his family. His army ranger past made him like to win and not think about quitting. His former wife, Rosa, before she divorced him and took away his young and only son, knew this well. She said he was similar to a general who, having won one war, looked forward to the next. His attitude might be changing after all these years. Jolly picked up on this one evening when they were relaxing from work at the boatyard. Cutter's son Jamie, who he had not seen for ten years, had joined the Peregrine boat crew. Jolly said in his amused way, You know, boss, since your kid arrived in River Sunday, you're almost a different guy. Hell, Jolly, I didn't even know Jamie was here. I had to find out from you guys in the boatyard. No skin off me. I don't know, boss. you changed. Maybe you hustle a little easier on us around the yard. I'm learning how to please you River Sunday folks. It's something more. You know Bill Johnson up in New York is all you got to make happy. Today, the Peregrine was leaving for the voyage into the Atlantic to reach the official starting line. In a few days, she would meet the other racers and begin her quest for the prize. 